Okay, here we are again, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for coming by. Appreciate everyone uh, coming by every uh, week and uh, checking out my videos. And we're going to have some uh, fun here. We're going to actually change up a little bit. Um, we're going to do some seascape uh, painting here. So we'll do some drawing first. And then we'll do our uh, watercolor painting uh, after we get our drawing uh, in, our pencil drawing. So let's get started. Uh, now I'm just going to work from uh, imagination here. I'm not really going to work from a photograph or anything. I think everyone should try to every once in a while. Um, it's up to you. You know, you're the artist. Uh, try to once in a while work with your imagination if you can. Some of you I'm sure do that. Some of you maybe create your own artwork and you just come up with some ideas and you put them down on paper, sketch them out, and then maybe you develop it a little more and then you create um, paintings from that, drawings and paintings. So it's a, it's a really a, a very, I would say, uh, it's a very good thing to practice using your imagination because sometimes even when you're working from photographs or from plain air, if you're outdoors and you're uh, painting a scene, sometimes you need to kind of create some ideas of your own to make the composition look a little better. Does that make sense? You know, sometimes you might be painting something and there's something in the way like a, a you know, maybe another building that gets in the way of another structure building that you might be, uh, you know, trying to draw. It looks like it's kind of, you know, making the scene look unpleasant with something else in the way. So, you know, sometimes you'll move things around, you'll delete out something, you'll add something in. So it's always good to practice doing some, you know, work with your imagination, just create a scene uh, out of your own mind or look at a couple different photographs of other people's artwork. Um, other paintings, um, other scenes, photographs, and then kind of try to, in your mind, um, come up with ideas of creating something on your own where you just uh, visualize it in your mind and sort of hash it out on your paper uh, with your pencil and then eventually, you know, painting it in. Um, but it, it, for the most part, I would say most, most everyone, I, I'm sure you work from photographs, you work from plain air, um, you work from maybe the internet, you work from our videos, like my video here. You might take the painting that I do and then redraw it and repaint it. That's perfectly fine. That's really a great way to go. But once in a while, try to fire in a nice uh, imaginative um, painting and drawing of your own, just so it keeps you quick on your feet. So let's uh, start out here. Let's make a little, we'll do a, a seascape. We're going to do a nice little fishing shack here. And maybe we'll... We'll do a little fishing shack over here on the left. And maybe there's some weeds over here. So we're doing our own little imaginative sketch. I uh, have some weeds and grass. Maybe we'll just we'll do the weeds and the grass all the way across. And then maybe we'll just Maybe we'll trail down the weeds and things and grasses down here to the right. So we'll keep it pretty much like that here. And it's going to be a fishing shack, so we'll, we'll have a little window on the side here. Okay, so we have a window, a roof here, we have a roof, we have the shack here, maybe some planks like that. Uh, we're going to have a shadow maybe here across, somewhere about there, some shadowing underneath, like so. And I'm hoping you can see this uh, drawing pretty well. Let me see if I can... Tone down the lights a little bit here. Sometimes we can see the pencil drawing a little better if I turn down the, if I dim the lights just a touch. Okay, so we have a shadow under the roof eave and a window and a shack, a fishing shack here. And uh, what else might we have? Um, yeah, maybe we have another, another uh, building here too, maybe another Another fishing shack over here to the left. 
Maybe there's a door over here. So we have a door there. Maybe the light's coming from uh, from up above here. Let's do the r light from here, from the left. So you can see I'm keeping this very simple. A couple shacks here. We'll have a little chimney on top here. And uh, what else do we have here? That looks pretty good. Now we're going to make the um, the distant uh, waterway over here. So we'll have this is our um, distant shoreline. So we're going to have the distant shoreline here. This is like a bay here. So we have the bay, we have a couple fishing shacks. This is going to be water here. And then uh, in the distance here, let's uh, make some land areas here. We just, we want to make it sort of, um, we just want to make it so that we have some interesting land features across the way here so that it just doesn't look too plain. And then let's, we'll, we'll do a, We'll do a building over here. This might be a boathouse, maybe where they repair the boats and the fishermen go in and maybe they bring their, uh, when they're fishing, they bring in their fish and they, the docks, they have some docks over here next to the, to these uh, buildings here. They can pull up their boats and they unload all their catches for the day. You can kind of make up your own story as you create your artwork especially when you're working with your imagination like this you can have fun you can kind of like in your mind just create little stories you know you're pretending you're the fishermen are coming in at the end of the day they have their catches and their their fish and they're bringing them into these uh, shacks and so forth and maybe there's some other people that are in some sailboats and they're just having a fun day and they might just be out with their sailboats and things enjoying the water and the beauty of the day so I'll make a couple small sailboat shapes here, some sailboats here, and then some even smaller ones in the distance. And then maybe there's uh, this, let's see now, the thing we have to kind of think about here is this building I made here is pretty large. So to keep the scale correct, these uh, fishing uh, sailboats here would be larger over here like this. So this building is quite large. This sailboat over here needs to be large as well and then maybe this one here too. Let's make these two sailboats kind of larger in size. Then as we go into the distance over here we can make those smaller there because they're more further away from us in the distance and those might be beyond where this building is. So this building's kind of, you have this shack here first, then next, as far as distance goes, we're going from close to farther away. So here, this is the closest, this is the foreground. Then we have middle distance here. So we have some of the larger um, sailboat uh, shapes here. This is still middle distance here. So that's sort of, here's a little, First here, then here, then behind these sailboats here you have this, and then all the way in the distance here you have these very, very small sailboats in the distance sailing in the water here in this bay, this beautiful bay. And we have some more land features over here, so we're going to put those in. And that's very small, but but it's there. We, we want to kind of make sure we have some mountains and, and land features here, and there's some The land slopes down maybe right here and then maybe the water here in the distance goes further into the far distance the um, furthest point in the painting that looks pretty good so here we've got a really good uh, composition boathouses
fishing shacks, boathouse, sailboats, and more sailboats here in the distance. In the far, far distance here, we still see the water, the bay trailing off in the far, far distance with the mountains and the far distance as well. Here you have the middle distance. This hill here, it's like a grassy hill. With this boathouse here, maybe another, we'll make another little roof there. That's another, maybe there's some sails over here. And some more sailboats here, so we have some boats and rigging and masts of the boats here and there. Maybe we have a few boats here. So we have a boat here in the, in the, in the foreground. That looks pretty good. And maybe we have a couple. And we'll have the wind blowing this way here. And as you can see, we've created a beautiful seascape. And then we can do our clouds, just a little bit of pencil lines just to If you want to do more of a free sky and you don't want any pencil lines or cloud shapes, you can just erase the, the lines if you're not interested in drawing the clouds. I usually don't draw, any, draw in any clouds really. I just paint my skies more free without doing much uh, drawing first. But this is actually the beginning stages here of just an, doing an, you know, a wor just working from imagination a little bit. You know, I'm thinking of other paintings I've seen in the past where you have, you know, a nice seascape, a bay, some sailboats, some fishing shacks, some boathouses, and that's all we need. And then we'll do our sky. We'll have fun with this. Just a simple composition. Let's have fun. Enjoy the the um, fun of the, you know, thinking of the, the water, the bay, the ocean, and... Uh, We'll have a fun time here, so let's come back in just a few minutes. Let's take a break. I always uh, like to say, too, as we're taking a break here, while we're sort of uh, putting the brakes on, um, let's uh, just, uh, if, you, if you would like, please subscribe. Uh, you'll be alerted whenever we have new videos coming out here. We do all kinds of watercolor videos. Every week we're creating new videos, so if you subscribe, you're going to get our new videos. You'll um, be alerted if you um, also... Um, tap on the notification bell next to the subscribe button. You're also going to be alerted exactly when our videos come out. So you'll know, you'll know exactly when the video comes out. You can look at it quick, check it out. If you don't like the video, no problem. You just click, uh, you know, you just go on to your next video, whatever you're doing on YouTube or online. And then, uh, if you like the painting, you can click on it and watch and then uh, work with it too as well. If, if you're just, you know, interested in trying to draw and paint this painting, you're going to go step by step and follow what we're doing. And you'll be able to uh, successfully uh, uh, get a watercolor uh, painting completed from start to finish, drawing and painting. And we do it all here. We cover it here, all, everything watercolor. Uh, so let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. Okay, we are back from a break and we're going to get started here. Um, I think the first thing we'll do is we'll work on the... Uh, foreground first on these fishing shacks here. So let's mix up some colors. Let's uh, olive green, uh, sap green, olive green, a little bit of burnt umber mixed in there, maybe some raw umber. I'll try to get some interesting color here, some yellow ochre. Um, a little bit of cerulean blue, 
a little bit of cool mixed in there. Uh, let's see what else we can... Maybe a little bit of uh, warmth here, a little bit of burnt sienna. And let's make our shack color here. A nice brownish green color. And then you'll notice that I'll I'll do some negative shape painting here. I'm going to paint around the grass. So here what I can do is paint some grass shapes like this. And then we kind of have our grass shapes working out nicely. And I painted around the window. That looks good. And then our roof color, maybe we'll go with some Burnt sienna, maybe it's a, uh, maybe like a metal roof, maybe a little bit of cadmium red. And we'll keep it a, a lighter red here. We don't want to go too dark. And then I'm going to make some lines. This might be like a metal roof with those small seams, like so. Then we can go in and darken that up a little bit maybe and make a couple little interesting variations like that. Maybe some cool, we'll mix in some cool, some cerulean blue with the uh, burnt sienna. Rin I rinse the brush and mix around a little, some green, maybe some sap green. I'm using Fabriano paper really nice for mixing and doing washes. Okay, and then over here we're going to work on this next building. Maybe we'll make the uh, roof um, maybe like a gray color. So I'll use some Payne's gray, ivory black, a little bit of burnt umber. Maybe we'll make a gray color roof here. This uh, maybe the next uh, fishing shack will make uh, brown and blue and some raw umber. We're having some fun with our mixes here. I realize some of you probably have a lot of fun mixing colors with some of your watercolors. Some other artists, I know you're, maybe you don't mix as much colors. You try to stick with simpler uh, washes and things. So it's up to you how you want to do it. I kind of, I like mixing the different colors. And what I'll do is 
I'm going to make a dark shadow under these eaves here of these roofs once this dries. And I'll put in some darks to where the windows are. And some yellow ochre, chromium of oxide. For that distant bit of hills here. And I'll mix in some other colors here and there. And again, repeating the colors from here over into this it looks good. Kind of matches. Everything matches nice. And I paint around that sailboat over here. And over here. Maybe uh, some alizarin crimson added to this. We'll make a red roof over here. And then we'll just put in a little bit of that green that we use for this area here in the roof, just to tone it down a little, mellow it out a little bit, the red. And that looks good. So right now we're looking, looking really good. This is again a simple, uh, We'll do some, uh, a simple seascape. We're not getting too fancy. We'll do some brown and red for this roof here. And if something doesn't come out great, you can just lift it up quick with a piece of tissue. Let it dry a little while. Work somewhere, uh, we'll work somewhere else over here. Let's do some darks here. Um, I'll make burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, a little bit of purple. And we'll do some windows here. We'll do some darks for the windows. Looks good in the door over here. Okay, now we can go back over here, maybe.
Okay, so we have a, a brown roof over here. A red roof here. These are the boat houses in the distance. You can always touch some stuff up with some titanium white if you once you're done with the painting. And let's go with some purple and some blue, purple and blue. And let's do the distant mountains here. The distant hills will go around. We'll paint around the sailboats. And that's all. A little bit of that purplish blue. So now we have a really good flow to the painting. We're going across foreground, middle distance, far distance with the mountains in the far distance and the uh, distant bay. We'll, we'll let this dry. Let's take a quick break. Um, it's good to take breaks here and there. can sometimes add layers so if you do like a mountain or a hill like this if you go with a little darker um, wash here then you sort of get a nice feel of of distance where you have like a couple of areas that are that have that. And we can also add in some sap green, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, just to make a little So we have some some bushes and things and trees over here. Again, a little more interest there, just to have some more details. Trial and error. Okay. Let's take a quick break and we'll come back in just a few minutes. We'll let this all dry and we can come back and we'll continue working on the water, sailboats and so forth. Okay, we are back and we're starting our painting back up again. I actually did a few trees here. What happened was I, I took my kneaded eraser and this is why I would kind of caution everybody. I do this, I always forget not to do this. Sometimes I'll see some pencil marks and I want to go in and erase. And what I do is I just forget myself and there's still some moist paint on the paper. And then when I go to erase, maybe some pencil marks here and there, I wind up uh, 
going into some of the paint and smudging. So I made some smudges on the paper over here by this mast of this sailboat here, right in this location. So I just made a tree of it. Then I figured, okay, let me make some more some more tree shapes over here. So I just I started making some trees. Now normally probably by the shoreline you're not we're not gonna see too many uh, trees like this, like big big trees and things, but you can put them in and uh, that's what I did here. So I tried to just uh, I do this occasionally if I have an issue with my painting where I smudge something with my hand or I forget myself and do a little erasing and I smudge into some paint. I just uh, try to correct it by adding something in most times. I might have been able to um, I might have been able to actually um, use some white paint too, some titanium white, but I think that looks okay. Looks kind of interesting. Makes the makes the scene look a little more uh, interesting with some tree shapes there and. Let's do some shadowing. Uh, let's do some purple and French ultramarine blue. Maybe a little bit of burnt umber too, darken it up even more, and some burnt sienna. So it's kind of like a warm and cool dark. And then we're just going to go underneath this here to make our shadow for our light. And that looks good. There we go. And another one here. Like that. Then here in the very far distance we can add some more of that shadow too. It's smaller though. Here is much more noticeable the shadow underneath the eaves of the roof here. You can also dab a few spots. If you feel you've gone a little too, I don't think it's too dark. I think it kind of looks good and it is going to lighten up a little. And then here there's a little bit of a shadow under that part of the roof there. And the same here, like that. Maybe that's uh, okay. That looks good. And some blue on the windows here. It's picking up the sky colors, the uh, the windows. Maybe a little bit of uh, yellow ochre too. A little bit of warm and cool. some sailboat Okay, let's do some 
yellow ochre. Mixed in with some of that blue, cerulean blue. And uh, I'll warm it up a little bit with some of the uh, raw sienna. Maybe some And I'm just kind of getting on the paint here for the foreground. Um, sap green, burnt umber, a little bit of dark mixes there too. It's in the foreground, so it should be darker. Just scrubbing on some paint, leaving some highlights. We could go with some darker blue and green. We can make a little bit of a darker. Scrub in a couple darks. And I'll splash on a few little speckles here and there. Okay, so we've gotten in some shading, some shadows under our eaves of our roof. And we have some really good um, weeds and bushes and things and grasses along the foreground here. Let's let all this dry and then we'll start working in our water. So it's good to let this dry, this section here, because we are going to start filling in the water here in the bay. So as we do that, if we start to put water in now at this point while this is still damp um, we're going to probably have an issue where things start to mix and muddy up and so to try to avoid that let's let this all dry 100 percent it takes about maybe 10 15 minutes or maybe a little more maybe 20 minutes and we'll come back after 20 minutes when this is all good and dry our foreground and we'll start doing our water okay we'll be right back Okay, so we're getting back started here. We're going to do the water along this beautiful uh, bay scene with some fishing shacks and boathouses and maybe some private homes over here. We're just having fun. We're improv here. We just took some simple ideas. Um, having some foreground uh, shacks, middle distance sailboats, and some boat houses or private homes, you know, whatever we want to make it, we can make our own story up as we go. And then uh, the distant mountains over here, nice and uh, light purplish color and blue for distance color and uh, some distant sailboats in the far distance. And 
we're going to continue. Let's do some water. Uh, we're going to do some cerulean blue. Maybe some cobalt blue, some cerulean blue, some viridian. And we're going to make it I'll leave some white there along that shoreline. We'll go around the sails. I'll leave some white paper for maybe some uh, some waves, choppy water. Maybe I will use some of this darker dark here. French ultramarine blue. Let's see if we can get some darker darks in there. Yellow ochre. For the shoreline here. Okay, we have the water done. This looks really good. Let's try to do some sky wash. We'll go to a larger brush. A Raphael number six. And I think I'll do just a mix of this here. Looks good. And what I'll do is I'll add some some water to the paper first, here and there, not everywhere. A 
I'll make some finer parallel lines down here. Okay, let's try that. Pick up some of this wash. Maybe a little bit of paint's gray. I think it looks good. Like a pale sky, kind of. And then I tend to just make the, the distance sky more parallel lines, finer, closer together, the clouds. And then the closest uh, area to the water, a little bit of um, cadmium orange yellow ochre maybe, and just and if I go over the sails I just lift up quick and I'll let that dry and then I'll, I'll finish up the sky over here but that looks pretty good Alright, I think we're good. We will let this dry for another 10 or 15 minutes or so. And we'll come back and we'll just see. I think we'll we'll do a dark maybe here for this uh, mast, for the sailboat here. And maybe a couple uh, dark lines for some of these sailboats in the distance possibly. And a few more details and I think we're, we're complete. But let's let this sky dry 100%. Uh, before we do anything else and this way we'll make sure that nothing will get uh, we won't get any blossoms or cauliflowers or blo uh, blotches of color that we don't want okay we'll be right back in just a few minutes let's start back up again we are doing the uh, final details here on our gorgeous seascape we finished up last with our water so once the water is completed and then we've let that completely dry 100% the next thing I think we can do is um, I think we can add a little bit of this sailboat is I'll negative shape paint this sailboat here. Um, so I'll mix up some green, meridian green, 
rate down a little bit with the cerulean blue, viridian green, and some of that green and raw umber mix just to So negative shape painting is something that really works great. Now that I'm doing it here, I'm trying to camouflage it a little bit. And then I can go around this sail up here. Like that. So this is where we kind of can sometimes get a little more mileage from our paintings by... No one's really going to give that too much thought that I did that right there, right? Let me zoom in a little bit. So I just did a little bit of a darker tonal value around this sail. I wanted it to be a little bit... I wanted to make sure it's noticeable, noticeably like taller and larger than this sailboat here. I wanted to avoid the symmet you know, symmetrical look of like two sailboats the same size right next to each other. So when I was painting the sky, I went over the sail a little bit there on the top portion of the sail. So if I add in this sky, And then I just blend in the, some clouds like that. I don't think it really will... It'll be fine. Okay, and then we wanted to I'll add some water to these darker burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, green, burnt sienna, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, touch of sap green, and let's put in a few. kind of some weeds, you know, grass and weeds and things just just a few here and there, not too many that can really be a problem here, let's we're going to do a small a small uh, tree here just uh, and another smaller little bit of a tree here just a couple things to set back the uh, rest of the painting when you see something like this it kind of It helps the painting. We could even do one here. Something like that. When you do something like this, a really nice uh, dark, like this. And you can see just really scribbly, nothing too fancy. adds to the uh, three-dimensional feel. It feels like it, it sits, it helps everything kind of sit further back in the painting, if you can kind of see that. Does that make sense? Can
we have the sail, the uh, mast here for the sail. This I would definitely dry off the brush and do it real light. And I would just go super slow and just do small, leave some spaces in between. So if you can get like a dashed, do some dash type look. Instead of trying to do the whole thing in one go, it'll tend to look better like you'll, it'll look as if there's some light bouncing off the the mast and then and also you'll you'll have less of a problem if it it gets like if it, if you wind up making it kind of wavy or or it bends to one side you know what I mean like if you want to keep this mast nice and straight plumb like that nice and good then you just you know rest your hand on the paper once it's dry make sure you're if you're working over here on the right side of your painting, make sure that's all completely 100% dry. Then you can rest your hand on that area. And then again, you just go real slow and just... And that's all, all that's really required is the hand to rest on the paper really firmly. And you just move your fingers basically about an inch at a time. So you can go once, two, three, maybe four four dash or four four times you move your hand a little bit each time one two three keeping your hand really firm on the paper then you can get that nice straight mass there and uh, to make it look interesting we'll uh, maybe we'll go with just a, maybe a red uh, I'll take a tiny bit of alizarin crimson here and we'll do a so we do our um, flag on our mast up here and and the winds are kind of going this way to the right you can see our our trees are leaning a little bit to the right. Coastal areas usually have heavier winds and that usually sort of trees have a tendency to lean to one direction near the coastline, whatever the prevailing winds are usually. And uh, so I think we, this is pretty good. We have, um, we could do this, uh, we have a chimney over here. We could do a small chimney. And this is where not doing that much detail is going to be better. It tends to be that uh, maybe in the distance here we might have a few masts and things over here. But too many details can be a problem. So I would tend to say once it looks pretty good And that's that's fine I think just enough it's a little bit abstract it's not completely you know 100% every detail filled in but it's but it's got enough details that it looks good so we'll call this finish now and we'll peel off the tape and we'll
And of course you can work from this now. You can pause your um, video or you can take a picture of it or a screen capture. But this is the finished painting. Okay, and now a uh, perfect time. Hey, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Hit the uh, subscribe button below. Um, <clears throat> we're making videos just like this every week. We do seascapes, landscapes. We do street scenes, figure work, drawing, ink and wash, everything watercolor. We do some uh, technique and uh, method, method type videos too to explain um, the finer details of watercolor so you can learn the, the real fine um, nuances of watercolor, how to navigate through certain things that are going to be difficult if you're newer to watercolor. If you're a pro, no problem. You can always brush up on some things if you want, but all are welcome here. Beginners, intermediate painters, if you're a pro and you just like to watch some painting once in a while like I do, uh, have a go, have some fun, come on by, hit the subscribe button. We'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.